If I asked you who was the best striker in the world right now, you might think of Holland, Salah, Lewandowski, or Mbappe, but you would be wrong. Almost every football fan knows of Latoro Martinez, but no one really talks about him. He has outscored all the strikers I've previously mentioned, and there is no sign of him slowing down in 2024. He is one of the most underrated strikers in the world right now, but how did he get to this point? Well, follow along with me as I take you through the rise of Lotaro Martinez. Lotaro Martinez was born on 22nd of August, 1997, and he grew up in a footballing family. His father played as a professional, so himself, he was destined to be a professional. His career really began when he started to play for the Lanayers Academy at the U17 level, where he would score 13 goals in the 2013 season. And numbers like that don't go unnoticed by the biggest academies in Argentina, and he would get picked up by the Racing Club Academy the very year after. It's hard to say exactly how many goals he was scoring in the 2014-15 season in the academy, but it was enough to get him to join the reserve side that season. And bro, he would do unspeakable things. That season for the B team, Martinez scored 53 goals in 64 appearances. From a young age, Lotaro had a sense for scoring goals, and that wasn't very common among players his age. And he immediately became one of the top prospects in Argentina. Hence, why he would get promoted to the first team near the end of the season, and make his senior debut playing a solid 10 minutes. But at 18 years old, what more can you ask for? Well, in the 2015-16 season, Lotaro would leave his academy days behind him, as he would officially sign with the first team. But this excitement would subside very quickly as a 19-year-old Lotaro Martinez would barely be used as a substitute, only making a measly 6 appearances in the league in the cup tournaments, playing a total of 66 minutes, only scoring his first senior goal in the last match of the season. And just look at this goal for yourself. Seeing this type of finish, although basic, showed how aggressive and a real goal-scoring threat Martinez could be. And things started to look up for him as in the 2016-17 season, Martinez would finally break into the first team, and he established him himself a more consistent role, making 27 appearances for Racing Club that season, scoring a mildly impressive 9 goals and 1 assist in the league. Mind you, these numbers did not go unnoticed by Argentina's under-20s, as he got his first national team call-up to go to the U-20 South American Championship and the U-20 World Cup, and he would absolutely ball out. In the South American Championship, even though Argentina didn't do the best as a team, Martinez would score a total of 5 goals in all the games he played, netting against some of the biggest teams in the continent, Brazil, Colombia, Peru. But things in the World Cup, however, did not go nearly as well. As Argentina were knocked out in the group stage, Martinez can only score a brace in the final match against Guinea. But individually, not too bad of a season for a 20-year-old Lotaro. But the next season only gets better. The 2017-18 season would be the year that Lotaro Martinez would make headlines as one of the best global football talents. First, let's start with the Copa Libertadores. Racing Club weren't the strongest in the tournament, but in his debut, he would bag a hat trick, and both times they played Vasco da Gama, he would score a goal, but past the group stage, Lotaro wouldn't make any more appearances, which is a terrible decision from the coach. But that wouldn't really matter, as in the league, he started to turn up. As he was given a role as a second captain, throughout the season this guy was scoring almost every game. The longest he went without scoring was 3 games, and it wasn't long before he had racked up 13 goals and 5 assists in 21 matches, which are some pretty crazy numbers for a 21 year old. And it wasn't long before Europe's biggest clubs wanted to sign him, like Atletico Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, and Inter Milan were all in a race to sign him. And in July of 2018, he signed for Inter Milan for 5 years, for 22.8 million euros, which is pretty cheap if you ask me, and he would make his debut shortly after. His official debut for Inter Milan came against the Sulo, and it wasn't the most exciting as Inter lost 1-0, but sadly he would get benched for the next 4 or 5 games, because to be honest, Inter had better options at the time, and it was taking some time to score that first goal this season, and that first goal is super important for any striker's confidence. Martinez would get that first goal, however, against Calgary, scoring the winning goal. Moving on throughout the season, it was difficult for Lautaro Martinez to adjust to the competitiveness of Serie A, and he was relatively useless in the Champions League for Inter. Europa League was a bit of a different story, as he would score in his debut, and he began to start every game for them. Hugely benefiting from Mario Icardi's injury, but hey, starting is starting. By the end of the season, he had a massive total of 9 goals and 2 assists, but it seemed that Lotaro should have been scoring way more goals, and it was clear something was off about him that season, and he seemed to fix it next year. As in the 2019-20 season, Lotaro Martinez was just different. In the league, he wasn't the best, scoring just 5 goals in the first 10 games, but in the Champions League, he was doing Holland things before Holland was a thing. Apart from the first match in the group stage, he would score or assist in every single game, at the end amassing 5 goals and 1 assist, before sadly Inter was eliminated from the UCL, where Lotaro would lead Inter all the way to the final, scoring an important brace in the semifinals but failing to win it for Inter in the final. But to be fair, they did lose to Sevilla, the Europa League kings. But anyways, back to Serie A, and things were just starting to look up for Lautaro Martinez. As toward the middle of the season, Lautaro Martinez is one of the most informed players in the world, and he had scored 7 goals from match day 12 to 21, which isn't a whole lot of volume, but just look at these finishes. Definitely a star in the making. The level at which Martinez was scoring, and the quality in almost every aspect of his footballing ability was beyond the numbers he was putting up, and he was worth way more than he was labeled for. By the end of the year, he had scored a total of 21 goals and 8 assists in 4 matches, which are not bad stats at all, and it might be hard for you to believe that it will only get better next season. 
2020-21 was an interesting year for Lautaro Martinez. The season began with him scoring three goals consecutively in the first three matches, but it would definitely slow down as he started to score in patterns of three goals in games one after the other, but then not scoring for the next four or five matches. This pattern continued throughout the season in the league, and Lautaro would be almost invisible in the Champions League, but it wasn't club football that Lautaro would play the biggest part in. Martinez was called up for the national team for the World Cup qualifiers and the Copa America with Argentina. Martinez wouldn't really contribute any major goals or any goals for that matter until they played Bolivia, scoring this absolute stunner. He would score in the quarterfinals against Ecuador, however, helping Argentina win 3-0. He was instrumental in Argentina's victory over Colombia in the semifinals, as he would score the first goal that got them to eventually draw, and he helped them win on pens to get them into the final. And then Argentina went on to beat Brazil in the final, definitely one of the hidden heroes in Argentina's victory. And he was also a big part in Argentina's World Cup qualifiers for 2022, as he scored an incredible 7 goals and 14 assists in 14 games, being some of the best teams in South America. Overall, Martinez ended the 2020-21 campaign with a total of 19 goals and 11 assists for Inter, along with winning the league with Inter and 10 goals for Argentina winning the Copa America. Not a super bad campaign, but the next season would be his best yet. 2021-22 was a pretty big year for Lautaro Martinez in all aspects of his career. First off, he would start his season in Serie A in some incredible form, and he was showing how technically gifted he really was. He was by far the most prolific goal scorer in the first half of the season, scoring 9 goals by the January break. But his form would take a tremendous hit in the second half of the season, and when the Champions League started back up, he couldn't score a goal for 3 months straight. But eventually in the latter stage of the season, he picked back up, and he would go on to score the winning goal in the Finalissima Supercoppa Italiana proving that Lautaro Martinez was a high-stick player and had the ability to create a tremendous impact in any game he was playing. And overall, despite doing almost nothing in the World Cup, he had a pretty incredible season. 25 goals and 4 assists in all 49 games he played. Some big numbers and he won a multitude of trophies, the Italian Super Cup, the Italian Cup, and the World Cup, becoming one of the best strikers in the world, and he would definitely earn that title in 2023. The season began off in the Serie A, as Lautaro Martinez would turn into the best goal scorer in Italy, and I'm not even exaggerating. He was scoring about every other game, and halfway through he had scored 9 goals, on track with his previous years. But his greatest accomplishments wouldn't come in the league, or the domestic cups. Even though Inter won the Italian Cup and the Italian Super Cup, it was actually the Champions League. Inter's campaign didn't start out the greatest, losing to Bayern Munich both times in the group stage, and Lautaro would score his first goal against Barcelona, and again in the next match against Victoria Pilsen captaining his team all the way to the quarterfinals, where Inter would play AC Milan. The first leg would start off well, with Inter winning 2-0, but in the second leg, Martinez would really go off. All game, this guy was playing like he was the best in the world, and eventually, he would score this goal to win the match. And it gave me chills, check it out. This goal solidified Inter's spot in the final against Man City, and sadly they lost, but it was close and the result could have been different if Lukaku wasn't on the field. Otherwise, he ended the season with 28 goals and 11 assists in 58 matches, which is pretty insane, but Martinez was not satisfied with his results and he would make the 2023-24 season his best yet. The Serie A season started with him scoring 5 goals in the first 3 games, already off to a crazy start. And believe it or not, that type of form continued, and in the following 10 matches he would score 8 goals, including 4 in 1 match against Salterina. But sadly, in the Champions League, things aren't turning out as good as last year, as he has only scored 2 goals in the group stage so far, and honestly hasn't had the biggest contributions at all. But at least things were sort of shipping up in the domestic cups, right? Well, he would score the winning goal in the Italian Super Cup to beat Napoli 1-0, and I mean, it was a pretty okay goal. But back to league, he didn't stop scoring at all. In the last 10 matches he has played up until the time of this recording, he has scored in total 23 goals in 23 games, not to mention the 4 assists he has as well. He has one of, if not the highest goals plus assist tally in all of Europe. And if that doesn't convince you that he is one of the best strikers in Europe right now, I don't know what does. Not to mention, he's helped Inter get 9 points clear in the Serie A title race. He has certainly been Inter's most important player, and his form is not stopping anytime soon. And if you haven't subscribed by now, what are you doing? Anyways, I'll see you guys next week. That's it for this video.